Um, I guess uh, a vehicle of support um, would be sources, just resources such as having more African American mentors. Um, as a graduate student, um, it can be difficult because we don't have uh, a lot of African Americans, especially in our program, um, to rely on. You know, we kind of rely on each other, but we need to see more um, mentors that we can relate to. We can say, okay, culturally, this is what I'm experiencing. Gender-wise, this is what I'm experiencing. Um, and having that, um, the availability of having mentors in, the, in, in our specific program, um, having resources such as, especially on the graduate level, um, I didn't attend, as you know, I didn't attend EIU um, as an undergraduate student. So transitioning from undergraduate to graduate, having that sense of, uh, What's the word? Um, I don't know. Just having that mentor there. Um, there are certainly, I know, um, Miss Tina in financial aid, we go to her all the time. And she graduated from our department, but she's not even working in our department. And I go over there and say, hey, this is what's going on. You know, <laughs> you know just to have that just to have that camaraderie, just to have that relationship with another um, African-American uh, female for myself, you know, in higher education is a big deal. And to be able to relate to, relate uh, with someone who has gone through some of the same things that I've gone through, who have worked through some of the stereotypes of being the angry black woman, um, <laughs> some of those things that, we, uh, that I go through on a daily basis is really hard. And when I can see a face that looks like me, that has gone through the, the things that I've gone through, that can support me, that can help me, um, makes me want to do the same for those who be coming into the program. And I think that's one of the, the vehicles of support that um, I would love to see happen and would be on board working with, making sure that it happens. You know, for my time that I'm here, I would be on board working with faculty who want to see that happen, you know, or to have graduate students who are coming in. Um, I'll be going into my second year of graduate school. So to start um, the mentoring at the um, graduate level for the first year students would be, I would be on board with that because I see the importance of it. I see that um, the, the, the African American faculty that we do have are very passionate. But when you have someone like, you know, um, who like I said, you can relate to overall and things of that nature, then it just makes it a lot easier. It makes the transition a lot easier. It makes the work a lot easier. It makes your, your time here at EIU very special, and it makes it easier. Um, it would make it easier, I guess, for myself, and I'm, ass I'm assuming uh, um, for a lot of other minority students. Uh, I don't think uh, I have such an experience as both of you are just about mentors. Um, my department chair, Dr. Osborne, is always available for me, and he, he is the best mentor I've ever had. I could always talk to him about any anything. He's just like a father figure for me over here when I'm so, so much away from my family. So in that sense, we do have a, a faculty member, Dr. Bart, who, who is a Muslim, and we could relate. And since he's from Pakistan, we can really relate to him about uh, the cultural issues or the religious issues that we might have. But in that sense, I, I don't really feel that I need to go to him specifically just to discuss my issues. I could do that with, with any other person over here, uh, any, anyone in my department or at the graduate school. I, uh, we usually interact with Linda Barter, who's the assistant to the dean, and the dean himself, we always talk to him. So I, I do not really feel how, how they feel about uh, the mentor. And, but I do um, feel that there should be an understanding of cultures and, back, and, and backgrounds, and to be able to ask questions and not to be biased or have a judgment cap, cap over when you're talking to someone with a different background. Mm -hmm. So, uh, because I may act in a very different way, and you might just assume it to be something, something very different or something very odd, but if you're not going to ask me a question about why I'm doing something like that, 
uh, that assumption will always be there. It will become a judgment with other students. Um, I guess some of the things that I noticed, um, and this is something I, I, a lot of people probably have already said, um, like throughout you know my, my years at Eastern, they always say that there isn't enough recognition of black or African Americans who have taken a, a, a lead role in helping African Americans and also helping our society. And it seemed like there's only recognition for African American History Month. So hmm. my thing is, I, I feel like, you know, there are a lot of people that are in the past, a lot of people that are in the present, and there are a lot of local people, like one per person that I always recognize is Janetta Jones, that helped hmm. out Eastern students a lot. So I think that, you know, one, one thing that we could do um, is also recognize African Americans, not just for African American or Black History Month. Recognize them in, uh, in October, <laughs> November, December, something like that. You know, put up a poster or something, you know. I mean, or do a, lec a lecture or, or, or a, a, a chapter on, you know, this is someone that may not be in all of your history books or may not be Martin Luther King or Rosa Parks. But this is someone that did this for African Americans. Um, also, like I said earlier, um, with the groups of students uh, grouped in, 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 um, in their race, uh, if you can mix that up, um, say, well, today we're going to do something different. We're going to have everybody move around, and I'm going to do a, not necessarily assigned seats, but just move people around and just periodically do that so that people can get to know people. Because, I mean, Students, I'm, I'm an undergrad, so students talk to people sitting sit next to them all the time, even when you're teaching. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it'll, it'll be a way that they can, you know, well, I can talk to this person, you know, okay, we can start a study, study group, and then it'll be opening up the lines of diversity. Um, also, um, doing more group activities, um, also hands-on lessons so that people can interact with one another. Um, then also, I was, I was thinking on what she was saying on having minorities, I mean uh, mentors, um, in fields that are related to what most African Americans are, are going into. Like, I know a lot of African Americans, they come to Eastern, they come from inner cities, they come to Eastern, and they go back and they work in that inner city. But a lot of professors, they don't come from inner cities, or they have done experience, they have, have experience in inner cities, but it's been 20, 30 years ago, and inner cities have changed drastically since then. And for me, growing up in a suburb, but having relatives that live in the inner city and my parents worked in the inner city, I would want to go back to the inner city and work, but I don't know anybody that can give me information on what to do, how to do it. So if we have people that have ample experience in inner city that can work and, and be direct, you know, be in direct contact with people that will be going back to inner city and working, of knowing, you know, finding ways in order to you know, work better and, and transition better, then that will be, I guess, a plus. Kind of hard going last, especially when everybody else, because I already talked about everything I had nothing <laughs> Um, I was going to talk about the um, having professors that had the urbanized experience to make it a little easier for us that came out of the inner city area to go back and teach in there. Like I mentioned, my practicum experience, I can't really, I can try to relate to those students that I had, but it was a little difficult because our speech patterns are a little different. You know, it's, sometimes I would say things, and they look at me like, what did you say, Ms. Chelsea? And it's like, just forget it, just do your work. <laughs> <laughs> and um, um, like having more things that recognize accomplishments of more minorities, not just African Americans, but like Hispanic Americans and Native Americans and whatever else you can think of, like whoever else you're interested in, tell me about it, you know, um, and having more events and guest speakers and things that can help you relate to us, because I know that, you know, they're not going to kick you all out and bring in somebody else.
about this, how to relate with this problem, how to relate with that problem. Going back to the inner city, like there's the discipline problems in the inner city are much, much different from the discipline mm -hmm. problem in the rural area. You know, like in some inner city areas, you have to worry about the kid shaking you or something, you know? And in a lot of rural areas, the most thing you have, well, from my experience, I can't speak for every school, but the biggest problem you had to worry about was somebody with foul language or they fight too much. You know, but other than that, they sit quietly in the classroom and you can keep teaching and you just, like, just ignore Benny over there. You know, we're going to keep going over here, but in other places, mm -hmm. it's, it's not that easy. Um, what else? Talked about events, and that's pretty much all I can offer. That's not repeating what everybody else said.